we are going to be talking about some of the hottest topics right now in mortgage. I think about the three biggest topics. Uh, I know questions that I'm getting and pretty sure questions that John are uh, getting from consumers. Uh, the last one I think is probably the uh, biggest question that I keep getting and getting and getting. Hey, just wanted to welcome you to today's show. Uh, we're here with John Keen with Loomis Mortgage. We are going to be talking about some of the hottest topics right now in mortgage. Uh, so hopefully by the end of uh, our discussion here with John, you'll have a better understanding, I think, about the three biggest topics. Uh, I know questions that I'm getting and pretty sure questions that John are uh, getting from consumers. Uh, so you'll want to round, stick around to the end. Uh, the last one, I think, is probably the uh, biggest question that I keep getting and getting and getting. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. We're going to bring you uh, a ton of real estate mortgage information uh, so you can basically uh, make some better decisions with your uh, real estate transactions. Uh, my name's Gordon Hegman. I'm a local real estate agent here in the Southeast uh, Valley uh, part of Phoenix in Arizona. Uh, and John uh, is a local uh, mortgage lender that I work with uh, personally. So if you have any real estate needs uh, in Arizona, John and I can both be of a great resource and asset to you. Um, if you get some value out of today's video, uh, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. Uh, share this with somebody that you know that might be looking to, uh, I think today's topic's more around people looking to buy. So if you know someone that's in the market uh, looking to buy, go ahead and share that. Um, and just so you get our future videos, uh, go ahead and hit the like uh, or subscribe button wherever you're watching this uh, and hit the alerts. So when you get these videos, uh, we put them on there, uh, you'll get a, uh, a notification so you can see everything we are putting out. So first, we have John. Uh, John, uh, give us kind of a brief, what's your background? Why are you here today? Why should we listen to you? Well, thanks for having me, Gordon. Again, my name is John Kane with Loomis Mortgage. Um, brief history about myself. I've been in the mortgage business now for 18 years. I just hit my 18 year mark on the 5th of September. Um, so I have a very longevity in the business, very knowledge, knowledgeable about all the products that are available for buyers out there. Um, kind of a brief history. I worked at the big bank, started out at the big bank in my early years of the mortgage business. And then I did leave and went into the retail side of things. And now I am a broker where, um, basically I have a lot more options for buyers, um, a lot more available, better rates, all of that. So that's kind of a brief history in regards to my background. And the reason I'm here to today is what we deal with on a day in and day out basis, Gordon, and that is clients asking about what's going on with mortgage interest rates. Why have they increased? You know, what's going to happen in the future? Yeah. What all the predictions, all of that stuff um, in regards to rates. So I'm here awesome. to break it all down and hopefully this helps you guys out and get you off the fence and Gordon and I can put you into a house. Awesome. Well, cool. Thanks for the introduction. Um, you definitely have done some great things for, for my clients personally. Uh, so anyways, kudos to John there. So let's kind of jump into it. Um, I think why the, one of the biggest questions, and like I said, these are going to be the top three questions that I get. That's that why we're addressing them. How are mortgage rates calculated? Uh, I, I know a lot what's going on right now. Everyone knows, I think by now, if they watch the news, what the Fed is, um, what they do. But I think a lot of times people, especially uh, consumers, aren't understanding when it comes to home loans, when the Fed is raising rates, which, which they have done fairly consistently to kind of squash inflation over the past year or so, uh, a lot of consumers, especially in the conversations I am having, oh, rates are going up. That means mortgage interest rates are going up. Um, so I thought no better uh, person to probably explain that in a eloquent way uh, than you. So everyone can understand, you know, kind of why, how mortgage rates are go up, down, all that fun stuff. So it is a very complicated question just because there's multiple factors that drive rates up or drive rates down. The biggest misconception is the feds. The feds meet every month and like 
like you mentioned, with inflation being high, what are they doing? They are increasing the prime rate to try to bring inflation down. Mm -hmm. Our phones as loan officers blow up when they hear rates went up a quarter of a point, that prime rate went up a quarter of a point. Keep in mind that has no bearing on first mortgage interest rates. Typically though, or those affect the prime rate affects credit cards, car mm -hmm. loans, home equity line of credits. So keep that in mind that the Fed rate does not and them increasing it does not increase the 30 year fix for the first mortgage. Um, no. Now, typically it's baked in already because the, the bond market is already estimating what the feds are gonna be doing before they meet. So they already predict like rates are gonna go up a quarter of a point. So that could affect rates two to three weeks ahead of the feds meet. Mm -hmm. And obviously loan programs determine what type of rate you have, all of that money down, credit scores, et cetera. Got it. And I think just for, if you're watching and if you're a little bit of, I guess, a geek and you like to track certain things, I think normally, uh, like clockwork and not always probably to the T, uh, but it, the 10 year treasury is usually what, if interest rates, mortgage interest rates are going up or down really is dependent on the 10 year treasury. So I know personally for me every morning, I jump on and I just go to Google and I literally type in 10 year treasury. And I think it's market rate or market watch that comes up and I can kind of see what the 10 year treasury's doing. So I can kind of say, Hey, rates are going to go up today. Or I see it go down. Oh, cool. Rates are getting more favorable. And I know recently they've just been all over the place. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up because I forgot to mention the 10 year treasury. Mm. That is the driving force on interest rates. This mm. can change every day, multiple times a day. Like you said, that's something you monitor. That's something mm. I monitor every morning also. So I can advise clients, is it good to float your rate where we're not locking that in because mm. rates could get better or you know, if it starts down, Hey, we better lock this rate in because rates could go up because the bond market does drive that. So yeah, thank you. for yeah. That. I yeah. And it also seems to, and I know a lot of, like I said, buyers, everyone, I know there's conversations. I, you know, most people I'm going to wait for home prices to go down and rates to go down. I know we're going to kind of touch on that a little bit later. Um, but I've noticed usually when I, I'm going to call it anything that would be negative in the news. Uh, I know specifically today they released some jobs report. Yesterday uh, they put out the CPI, which is a consumer price index. You know, usually when one, I would say usually it seems like when things get worse, or quote unquote, rates get better. Um, when the economy is showing any, as right now, which is seems counterintuitive, any signs of strength or things that are positive. Um, mortgage rates tend to tend to go up. So, yeah. And um, yes, you're right. Recession times, typically rates go down when the economy's thriving. There's a lot of money out in the market. Guess what? Inflation goes up, interest rates go up. So okay. it, it follows the same curve in and out. And there are a lot of predictions of a recession coming up. So fingers crossed. And we'll get into this a little bit later about pro you know, projecting interest rates. So let's go. Awesome. Ahead. Well, cool. Now we know how mortgage rates are calculated most of the time. Um, I think right now, as of the time of this video, uh, interest rates, I think are probably give or take, depending on your credit and all that fun stuff. I think we're probably what seven and a quarter somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Again, somewhere. depending on credit score money down, but um, typically a government loan right now is pricing out about 7%. Seven, okay. FHA or VA, and then a conventional loan is about seven and a half percent. Got it. Okay. So I guess a lot of people, they, we were really used to two years ago, you know, two, 3% loans. And then of course, over the past, call it eight months, nine months. Now they've gone up and then been fluctuating. Most buyers don't love I think sixes or sevens. Um, so I know, is there any way, if you're a home buyer today, you're out looking at homes with your agent um, and working with a great lender to, is there a way to, to get a lower interest rate than what's out there in today's, in today's market? 
There is. It's a very popular program. It's been around since uh, probably beginning of last year, whenever we kind of started seeing uptick in interest rates, and it's called a two-on buy-down. And how it works is, let's just say the going rate for a 30-year fix is at 7%. With the two-on buy-down, what we do is we take that rate and we discount it 2% for year one. So it'd be at a 5% for year one, which you're mm-hmm. going to be saving a lot of money on a monthly basis in your principal and interest. Year two, it goes to 6%. Again, you're going to be saving money on a monthly basis because of that interest rate. Then year three, it goes to that fully index rate of 7%. And now your rate is fixed for the next 27 years at that 7% rate. However, our goal is to refinance you in year one or year two um, when rates do dip. That way you can get out of that program and into a lower uh, fixed rate at that time. Okay. And I think too, and I've, we've this, this program where I think we've been talking to a lot of people, I think probably for about, probably about a year now, I think, right. Um, I think what a lot of people and a lot of consumers are not understanding. A lot of people are still really shell shocked from 07, 08. And a lot of that, you know, there's a lot of uh, factors in 07, 08, but a lot of those were, a lot of people were in adjustable rate mortgages, which had really, really low rates on the front end. But I think what a lot of people don't realize is that those adjustable rates never, they don't, they didn't have a ceiling. So what happened is, Hey, I have this, you know, 5%, 5%, yay, things are good things. And obviously the housing market, as we all know, you know, took a big, you know, or thing, I think it was bear. I think it was a bear stir. Somebody failed on wall street, I think, which kind of blew things up. But all of a sudden those adjustable rates went to, something that people couldn't afford. So I think the biggest difference I, with this, you know, two, one buy down is that, you know, if, even if you never refinance out of it, you forget about it, whatever the case may be, it's never going to go beyond what you know, you know what it's going to go to. Correct. And that's what we, we qualify you off the higher interest rate. Oh, awesome. So we qualify you off the 7% and off, and there's documentation that shows that this is what your payment's going to be after year three. Okay. So like you said, back in the 08, 07, 08, 09 years, the vast majority of loans that we were writing were adjustable rate mortgages where, yeah, it was called a teaser rate where you would get a super low interest rate, but then we didn't know what was going to happen to that interest rate, but we would qualify you off that lower rate versus for this program. It is a 30 year fix and we qualify you off that 7%. So there shouldn't be a payment shock because you know what your payment's going to be. Perfect. And I know personally myself, um, and John did it for me, uh, the home that I actually live in right now, my primary residence, actually I have, I participated in this, uh, same program now. And I think my rate at the time was a six and a half. So I think right now I'm making payments on what would be what four and a half. And then whenever my anniversary, I forget when I purchased this house, but whenever that anniversary date hits, it'll, I'll make payments based on five and a half. And then at some point, six and a half, but hopefully in the next, you know, 24, 24 months, rates get more favorable. And hopefully I never have to see that, that six and a half, but, but who knows, who knows. Phenomenal program. Again, r- rates are eventually going to slow down and start going down. So it works to get people into houses now. And uh, also another benefit with that two on buy down is the money that it costs for that buy down is prorated out. So what I mean by that is let's just say it cost $9,000 to buy that interest rate down for those yeah. two years. And we refinance you after year one then what we'll do is there's $6,000 remaining okay. from the cost of that buy down. We'll take that six grand and we'll apply it towards your principal balance. So awesome. we'll buy that principal balance down whenever cool. we refinance you. Awesome. So kind of in summary to this, um, if it's something and you're listening to this and it's something you're interested in, yeah, definitely wherever you're watching this from outside of Arizona or if in Arizona, John can run you through it. Some people actually need to see it on paper for it to make a little bit more sense. It's really not that difficult. If you're working with a great lender and a great agent can make it happen for you. Um, And the cost to this um, is actually paid for by the seller. So you'll need a great agent because your your agent will need to negotiate that money from the seller. So 
So anyways. It's one of the best programs I've seen in years, to be truly honest with you, because it's not costing the buyer anything. It's costing the seller mm -hmm. and you're getting into a lower interest rate in the first couple of years. Awesome. Cool. So two, one buy down, you can get a better rate in today's market. So I think the magic crystal ball question is where are mortgage rates headed? And I have some notes here that I, you know, just things I've been seeing in the news too. And I try to, you know, I, I try to take in a lot of information from a lot of different sources so I can make some good assumptions, you know, but I'm seeing stories that rates could head up closer to 8%. Um, but then I also see uh, predictions by, you know, possibly, you know, maybe the end of this year, 20, or excuse me, like 2024, 2025, we'll start seeing rates in the sixes and fives. So it seems like it's kind of all over the place where rates will go. Um, I think the one thing though, that kind of sticks stuck with me, um, and then I'll let you kind of get in because I know you follow some, some gurus out there, um, for mortgage stuff, but like I said, keep in mind, rates could go up to 8% and a lot of buyers do not like sevens. Um, and I always say that low interest rates are a gift and not the norm. Um, so like I said, if, you know, if 7% seems high, 8% seems a lot higher. And, and I said, keep in mind with a home loan, you can always refinance out of it. If rates get better, if rates get worse, at least you're locked in. It's something, I guess, certainty, a lot of people like it. So kind of my notes on that, but let's get into John's, uh, John's crystal ball. We won't hold your feet to the fire. Um, but kind of give us some uh, insight there if you would. Um, so it's, for the last couple of years, well, let's take a step back. The COVID years, when the rates were in the low threes, mid twos, you know, depending on what time, let's be realistic. That's not a healthy market for the housing market. Those rates were due to a pandemic. And so personally, unless we deal with another pandemic like we did with the COVID years, rates probably won't ever get that low again. So mm -hmm. Like I said, I've been in the business for 18 years. I would say your average rate is anywhere from six to 7% on average if you take it over you know, the last 18, 19 years. Mm -hmm. So where we are right now, yes, our rate's a little bit higher than that. They are due to inflation. However, we are seeing inflation come down. So in turn, we're hoping interest rates will die down. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people predict, predict, predict what is going to be happening with interest rates. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, no one has that crystal ball. However, a lot of companies out there are predicting by the end of this year to be in the mid sixes and mm -hmm. the beginning of next year in the upper fives to 6% range. So Got that's it. a dra drastic drop from seven to seven and a half where we currently stand. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, in 2025, they are projecting rates to be in the upper fours, the low fives. Oh, wow. Awesome. So, so like you mentioned, what we can do is do a refinance. You can still buy now while it's not super busy in the market. And just think it's in a year or two years, we mm -hmm. can refinance you out of that 7% interest rate into a 5% interest rate or whatever the case might be and save you money on a monthly basis there. Awesome. Yeah, I know it's hard to, to predict. I mean, it's been, I think, even great realtors, great lenders, great economists. Yeah. It, you know, it's been insanely hard to predict where things are going. And, you know, and that's, I think, been the biggest, the biggest challenge. So I think with anything is just dealing with what is in front of us today. You yeah. know, does it make sense for you to buy a home for yourself right now based on what's in front of you um, and keep it like in mind as well when money gets cheap and we experience that in 2020 2021 i mean money got insanely cheap and when i say that obviously uh, interest rates are really low a lot of buyers jump into the market and when that happens we see prices get driven up and i think kind of the cliche phrase would be bidding wars right um, everybody hates them but when it's when money is more available and and uh, monthly payments are cheaper, home prices normally are going to escalate a lot faster. 
And then even people are like, oh, no, I don't want to participate in that as well. So kind of going back to what John was saying in today's rate environment and refinancing, buy the home right now. And I know here, particularly in the Phoenix market, and I actually saw a story this week that I think uh, mortgage uh, applications are down to like a 27 year, 27 year low. Um, and kind of, if you know anything about in investing, I think normally you want to be buying you don't want to be buying when everyone else is buying and you don't want to be selling when everybody else is selling. You want to be in a position where you could take advantage. So especially right now, like I said, interest rates, not fantastic, not going to lie. Um, but still a lot of sellers out there that aren't getting a lot of traffic in their listings that might be willing to, you know, take a lower price, give you that seller concessions that you need to do that rate buy down that John talked about. And then at some point, and I said, I, mean, I think there's a lot of stuff that came out this week. I looked at revised numbers, even on just home values, where there's five uh, uh, people or companies, there's things that track home values and they revised, everybody revised. Everyone was expecting negative home values this year. Um, some are still at, like there's two that were at zero, but most are, you know, looking at anywhere from three to 6% appreciation. So right now, no one's, there is no data out there. And I'm going to say data. There is no, uh, hate to say that. Anyways, relevant data, data that's driven by data and not maybe driven by personalities or scare tactics, but there's nothing out there that says home prices are going to go down. So by locking that price at that 7% rate, or maybe that 5% rate with that buy down, and then working with someone like John, because they keep track of in of your loans so when things get more favorable you get that phone call that says hey let's let's do this so yeah and it's it's all sl uh, supply and demand yeah and obviously here in the valley supply is low mm -hmm. and is high still even with the interest rates and yeah. so like i've seen reports also about appreciation for this year um i've seen a couple at the zero but i've also seen a couple companies saying up to 10 percent Wow. So it's still a good time to invest. And mm -hmm. what's your biggest asset in life? It's a home. And yep. so buy now, rates drop, we will refinance you, save you money on a monthly basis. And yep. at least you're not in a bidding war going twenty, thirty thousand yep. dollars above asking price. Yeah. And just for I think for longevity's sake, we'll record it on this video and it'll be funny to watch this video years from now. Um, I own a primary residence at six and a half i just bought a rental property at seven i want to say seven seven and a half seven point six two five seven point six two five thank you <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a home that i actually bought uh i think about a year ago at a you know at then i thought was a nuts rate i think it's five and a half percent so anyways i'm participating in the market like i said keeping like i said like i've said i don't know how many times in this video and john said at some point rates get better I'll refinance them all. It'll be the biggest gift and I'll be a happy camper. So anyways, I participate in this market and I think it's a good, good time to, good time to jump in. Real estate always seems to do pretty good. I totally agree with that. Real estate yeah. is your best, biggest asset in life. So awesome. Not do it. Cool. Well, anyways, thanks for joining us today, John. Uh, John Kane with Loomis Mortgage. Um, and we'll put, after we put, uh, post the video, we'll put the information uh, down below. You can contact John. Our information will be there as well. Um, like I said, if you're getting, if you got some great, uh, love to see some comments. We'll definitely get back just to see uh, what information that you liked, maybe some things that you didn't like, some questions. We can jump in and answer those. Um, but like I said, like I said before, share this with somebody who's out looking to buy a home. They need the information because I don't feel it is out there. Um, otherwise, I thank you for joining us, John, and I'm sure Thanks I'll be having me. See talking to you soon. Take care.